and perhaps you're not sure which side of the health care debate that you fall on, well, straight ahead, we'll talk to a panel of experts. There are two out of three doctors right there in that live picture that we're going to talk to, coming to us from different parts of the country, even though they know each other from way back when and all practice in the same general vicinity. Anyway, we're going to be talking with them about their ideas about the health care debate. All right, let's talk some more about uh, health care reform and what the prognosis is for America. Three doctors on the front lines of the health care debate. They're also friends who formed a pact as teenagers growing up in Newark, New Jersey, to make something of their lives and to pursue medical dreams. And they've actually written quite a few books about it. Uh, here's one, The Bond, The Three Doctors, one of the three books that we've seen. We welcome Dr. Ramit Hunt, an internist at Princeton University Medical Center, joining us from New York. Good to see you. Dr. George Jenkins, an assistant professor of clinical dentistry at Columbia University, also joining us from New York. And Dr. Samson Davis, an emergency room physician. But I understand, uh, Dr. Davis, you are practicing in New Jersey, even though you're joining us from Las Vegas, right? That is correct. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad that we were able to get all of you together, at least together via satellite. Thanks so much. Okay, well, let's let's talk about health care reform, gentlemen, where we are in this. You are treating... Uh, patients all the time, insured, uninsured, and you're seeing whether indeed we need to be at this juncture. Should we be having health care uh, reform debate? Uh, Dr. Hunt, let me begin with you. Um, is there a great need right now uh, to offer more public assistance for people who are currently uninsured? We're talking about 46 million people, right? Absolutely, and I think we definitely need to do something about it. And I think most people do understand that that is the case. It's just a matter of how to get it done, but it, it is. It, it, we we see a lot of people in mm -hmm. our practice, uh, and I, I, I part, partly take care of a clinic, and our clinic has a whole bunch of uninsured patients that we we, we grapple with how to, to to get their medical needs taken care of, and so it is very tough. And mm -hmm. and you know we, we're on the front lines of this. Yeah, and I know none of you want to talk about the politics of how we get there, but instead, in based on your professions, what you're seeing in your patients all the time, you know, Doctor. Jenkins, you know, we're talking about dentistry, but at the same time, a lot of folks, if they don't have the access to preventive medical care, they don't have dentistry either. But how can we ignore one, and how is it that, you know, dentistry and medicine really are connected when you talk about being uninsured? Absolutely. Um, as a resident, um, I, I got a chance to work in, in emergency rooms, and I saw how overloaded those uh, facilities were because people aren't... Um, they, they, they don't have access to preventive care or even comprehensive care for that matter. Uh, and so they were coming to the emergency room for minor issues or issues that were uh, overblown because they didn't have access to proper care. So they would come in there with an abscess or something like that when they could have just gotten uh, a filling at, at the very beginning if they were uh, uh, treated in a comprehensive care manner. And so, Dr. Davis, you're in ER. And you're seeing this all the time, catastrophic hair. People who are not getting preventive care, but when it balloons into something much bigger, now they're able to go to you know, the emergency room, get some care, but you're treating them for things that could have been headed off a long time ago, right? Absolutely. I mean, I have one case, a 55-year-old man that I was taking care of in New Jersey uh, who was suffering from throat pain for an entire year. And uh, by the time he arrived into the emergency department, he had a uh, progressive form of throat cancer. and. Uh, it was not much that we can do, but at, at the same time, if he would have been treated and seen early, there, there were treatment options that we can offer him that would have not only saved his life, but would have saved the uh, extreme cost of medical care. So the three of you have set the stage for all of us now about exactly what you're seeing in your offices, in the hospitals, etc. So give me an idea what the conversation is like between the three of you. You're so close, really like brothers. You talk about uh, what you encounter in your medical professions all the time. What do you talk about, Dr. Hunt, when it pertains to fixing America's health care? I think we, you know, we really just all need to chip in and do our part as far as, I mean, we, we, we like to, to focus on prevention, and I, I think it, we just had a walk-a-thon yesterday uh, where we talked about sickle cell, we talked about diabetes and a lot of different things, and to try to get people aware and also get them plugged into the system because you know, right now it's not it's not perfect, but there are ways to get plugged into the system. Like my my hospital and many hospitals around the country offer charity care, and so there are a lot of ways to get plugged into the system so that you can get some preventative uh, care before it's too late. So and that's kind of the things we talk about amongst each other. So, Dr. Jenkins, what's the most frustrating thing that you encounter on a regular basis that becomes a topic of conversation between the three of you? I think. Um, 
just having a, a lack of care and when we get those patients who don't have uh, um, insurance, but as, as well as I come across patients who ha actually have Medicaid who don't actually utilize it as much as they should, uh, which becomes frustrating in, 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 a, in another sense because they actually have a way to actually go get the care. But dentistry sometimes doesn't make its way up to the priority that medicine does oftentimes. And it, it's something that people tend to deal with as opposed to being proactive and going out there. But um, just, just having a patient come to you with a need and no idea to how they're going to cover it financially is always just frustrating and, and, and we're always interested in trying to figure out ways to to mm -hmm. figure that out but we, I actually also work with a grant um, called Elder Smiles at Columbia University where I was able to treat patients uh, with at no cost at all because of uh, a nonprofit sector chipped in so I think if we as healthcare professionals jump out there and try to chip in and uh, different sectors private sector nonprofit sector get out there and try to do more while they're working on the political aspect of things. I think it's going to take a concerted effort by all Americans to try to tackle this problem. Okay, we're going to talk some more about this because it is huge. It is a huge issue, and I'm very curious to see if you are all in agreement with how to fix America's health care, or if there are some areas that uh, you all try to negotiate between the three of you. Much more straight ahead.